over the Nationals, as we talked about in the open. Jordan Walker continues to tear it up in this competitive camp that Ollie Marmol and his staff wanted. We're seeing it. We're seeing a lot of guys take advantage of different opportunities out there. So I'm excited to watch these guys go at it again and excited to watch Jordan Montgomery make his Grapefruit League debut in 2023. And feast your eyes on Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt and many others on the field today. This is their last game before they depart for their respective clubs to start WBC play. Well, and that's going to bring a few different challenges. We're going to get a chance during the broadcast today to talk to Ollie Marmel about this, right? These guys are heading off to the World Baseball Classic, but other guys will get at bats. So that competition Petition, we're going to see it ramp up when those guys leave. Jordan Montgomery, you mentioned him in the open. He's got the ball today against Buck Showalter in the Mets. So he came over from the Yankees, as everybody knows. Harrison Bader went the other way in the trade, and uh, it was a bit of a shocker at the time. But you look at the numbers that he put up for the year. He was a dude for you. 32 starts. He made 11 of those in a Cardinal uniform. The pitch arsenal here for Jordan Montgomery. He's got the sinker. He'll get a lot of ground balls. His curveball is a good one. He's got the changeup and that four-seam fastball, something that he used a lot more in the Cardinal uniform uniform getting in on some of the right handers but I'm looking forward to watching a full season of Jordan Montgomery and in his spring debut Brad he's got a big league lineup to face for the New York Mets Buck Showalter's club won 101 games last year did not win the National League East the Braves caught them on the final weekend last year but they are loaded the batting champion Jeff McNeil leads off Eduardo Escobar at third, Francisco Lindor, Pete Alonso, Mark Canna, Tommy Pham, the former Cardinal, Abraham Almonte, well-traveled players in right field with Tim Lo Castro in center and Omar Narvaez in harness behind the plate. Let's check out the Cardinals defensively That's behind right. Montgomery. And as you mentioned, Jordan Walker, not just offensively, Brad, he's done it with the glove, too. This kid's going to get a chance, isn't he? He's going to be in the lineup each and every day. You see him in left, Tyler O'Neill in center, Alec Burleson in right field. And uh, you, you look at the infield, Nolan Arenado, as you mentioned, him and Goldie, the last opportunity we'll get a chance to see him for the next couple of weeks. On the corners, Mason Wynn and Donovan and Tris Barrera is doing the catching today for the Cardinals. So Montgomery wraps up his warm-up tosses. Umpiring crew today, C.B. Buckner, our old pal behind the plate. Lance Parksdale at first. Ryan Addison and Edwin Moscoso rounds out the umpiring crew on this beautiful day in Jupiter, Florida. Gentle breeze blowing 84 degrees, as we mentioned. And hopefully, the weather where you are is just as nice as well. So Jeff McNeil, the National League batting champion, gets things started for the four and five Mets last year. McNeil hit 326 on the year. And we're underway with a miss inside. One ball, no strike. Same rules in effect. Pitch clock all continuing. Violations are down, I think it's safe to say, Brad, over the last several days as hitters and batters, pitch, hitters and pitchers alike get used to that. And a little chopper out second. That'll be a piece of cake for Brendan Donovan. And McNeil rolls out for out number one. I think we talked about that the first couple of games. You knew that it was going to be a learning curve for a lot of guys, the rules that are out there. But as you go on, and that had been the case in the minor leagues, you take a couple of weeks, you figure it out, and you adapt. He's the best at what they do at the game. But whatever the rules are, they're going to adapt to Eduardo Escobar, terrific year for the Mets last year. Hit 20 home runs, big hits for them. Played great defensively, too. As Montgomery misses a little low, one ball, no strikes. Another chopper. Nolan handles a tricky hop. And two ground ball outs for Montgomery to start in this blustery day. Brad, two up, two down with Francisco Lindor coming up. Well, that's exactly what you want to see from Montgomery pounding the strike zone. As we talked about, he's got a lot of his work so far this camp on the backfield, but getting his first chance in Grapefruit League play here, and that's what he did last year. He came over, he threw strikes, ton of first pitch strikes, and got outs quickly. Here's Lindor. He's hit a homer so far this spring, batting a cool 400. Boy. This guy's one of the great stars. Once he left Cleveland, came to New York. His first year with the Mets was so-so. Last year, he had a fantastic season for them. Mets record for homers and RBIs by a shortstop. Last season. And he unloads left center field. Well hit. And that one's not going to come back. Lindor hits a long home run to put the Mets in front.
seven out of 16 at the plate this spring, Brad. Two homers for Lindor. Well, he's pretty hot, and if you're going to make a mistake to somebody, don't make it be this guy. It was a 94-mile-an-hour sinker elevated right down the middle from Montgomery, and Lindor's locked in. He's not missing that. So Lindor up to his old tricks. The Mets strike first here in the first, and here's Pete Alonzo. Alonzo was a 40 homer man last year for the Mets. And Pete drove in 131 runs on the year. This one popped up into shallow right. Alec Burleson is there. He's got it, and that will retire the side. Francisco Lindor, a home run. Paul Goldschmidt's coming up third for the Redbirds in the bottom of our first. Dale's coming in. They made their trek through Abacoa down here as well, so the community got to come out and see them. There's your Cardinals lineup. Brendan Donovan leading off against one of the many Mets imports, Kodai Senga. When you talk about something, someone going on a spending spree, Steve Cohen of the Mets, the ownership there has done that. And they brought in a terrifically heralded pitcher from the Japanese leagues to be a member of their starting rotation. Well, this is a guy that there were plenty of rumors who was going to sign him, who was going to pony up and end up being the Mets. You see 6'1", 202, 30-year-old right-hander. Fastball is going to be upper 90s, around 100. Good split finger fastball as well. Curveball slider, he's got it all. The The question is, what does it look like at the big league level? He showed out uh, in Japan. He, he was fantastic there, and they got a good arm here. We were talking before the game, Brad. A lot of different things for a player like Senga to adjust to coming over from the Japanese leagues to the North American big leagues. There is for sure, and one of them is a five-man rotation. Like, that's a big difference. Used to pitching there with the, the six-man rotation, extra day of rest, and the Mets have talked about they will find times during the, the season to utilize the six-man, but for the most part, a five-man rotation. There's a lot. You, you think about the new rules that you have to deal with. You're learning that. You're learning there's certainly the language barrier. A lot for Kodai Sanga, but we know this about the game of baseball. Talent plays, right? The game of baseball translates uh, to any uh, any language. Donovan took his time out. Now digs back in with a full count pitch and takes ball four. Good start for the Cardinals here in the bottom of the first inning. Here's a look at the Mets defensive lineup. There's a familiar face. Tommy Pham gets the start in left field. He was with the Cardinals for a number of years. Certainly was. Drafted by the Cardinals in 2006. You got LaCastro and Almonte in the outfield. Escobar, Lindor, McNeil, Pete Alonzo, big strong guy over at first, and Omar Narvaez doing the catching. And Tyler O'Neill, the second hitter of the inning. See if the Redbirds try to do some running here on Senga. Down and away. for Tyler O'Neill. Goldschmidt on deck, 1-0. If you're just joining us, Francisco Lindor, a two-out home run in the first for the Mets. And ripped out a play foul. We've talked about it, too. The pitchers that have come over from Japan, very deliberate out of the stretch and out of the windup. Can't do that now. I wonder if that's something opposing teams will try to exploit with Kodai Senga as he adjusts. It certainly is worth trying a 1-4-1 to the plate. Good breaking ball right there from Senga. Anything above 1-3, you think about going there. So you could push it. And we're seeing now as camp progresses. I know first week, Ali Marmel talked about it. You want to get your legs under your guys. But you'll start seeing them take more chances. This man's out pitch is something they call the, the ghost changeup. If, is that what I read correctly? The ghost split? That sounds scary to me. Right. But it disappears. It's a disappearing split finger yeah, pitch is it, what. What sells it is the arm action. He's got the fastball at 100, then throws that split finger. Runner goes. Pitch foul to the plate. We'll try again. Three balls, two strikes. That time it's the slider from Senga. And that's the, the exciting part here. If you're a Mets fan, you get this guy. You don't know exactly what you have here, but you've got a high-octane arm. You've already got a rotation that is anchored by Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. And you bring this wild card in. I mean, it's something special. 
Outside, back-to-back -back walks to start the game. Good patience for Tyler O'Neill. And now Paul Goldschmidt, a chance to do some damage with two on and nobody out. Paul's first game action since March 2nd. He's five for nine this spring with a homer. So Senga in some first inning trouble in his Mets spring debut. We see right there, Cody, uh, Cody Senga on that one. Just looked like he was trying to throw a strike. Arm action slowed down a little bit. This is not a situation you want to get in with Goldie up. Fifteen pitches, five strikes for Senga so far. Well, this is something uh, that we've seen here. You have to be, as a staff, you got to figure out when do we go talk to him. You don't have anybody out. Do you talk to him early? What if things continue to snowball with the new rules? Things happen quickly. And you made a great point. Language barrier. When you have a pitcher struggling, it's one thing to communicate in English. When you have a translator that has to work with you, your message has to be even quicker, I would assume. Well, for sure it does. And uh, that's something that you work on in the backfield. You work on that communication beforehand, seeing, you know, how do you get to the point and get there quickly? Got that one over on a 3-0 count. Three balls and a strike. Well, you, you can see a language barrier. You, you speak body language, right? You can see that Kodai Sanga is really just feeling for it, especially with his breaking ball. The arm action is totally different between that and his fastball. Popped up. And Lindor at short will handle the infield fly for out number one. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that in a big league game. Have you? There's a first for everything. Batter's automatically out, but he just let it drop just That's in fine. case somebody made a base who running knows? mistake. Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe as, as we talked about, it's spring for everybody. Maybe an umpire doesn't yell infield fly, <laughs> and you get yourself a little double play. So Lindor handles the first out Arenado charged with a pause here as Senga works quickly and Arenado the Cardinals cleanup man having a great run seven for 12 this spring with a couple of homers back to back walks and a pop up and there's a first pitch strike I feel like the question for many Cardinal fans out there is can these guys do it again talking about Goldie and Arenado and I guess why not? I mean, you look at them, just continue to get better and better. I think that Nolan would like that MVP this year. Goldschmidt and Arenado first and third of the MVP balloting last year in the National League. 30 homers, 103 RBIs for Arenado, who's quickly down two strikes here with two on and one out. There's an awful lot to discover in spring training, and this is an intelligence-gathering mission for all of these Cardinals hitters against Senga. They haven't seen him, obviously. And that ball buzzing in on the hands and fouled away again. We'll try again with two strikes. I think sometimes those are the, the best tests, and honestly, you just can see your athleticism as a hitter take over. Okay, we, we've got a scouting report. We've heard some stuff. Let's just see it and let's go hit it. Uh, easier said than done with the guys throwing 97 to 100 with the slider, that split finger that we talked about, but get an opportunity to see one of the better arms in the game here. To right. But right at Abraham Almonte, who makes the grab and no advance. It's first and second, two outs, and Jordan Walker is coming up. Big spot for the Cardinals, big left fielder. And man, has he had a great week. <laughs> Among all hitters in the Grapefruit League, Walker leads in hits, average, Total bases, extra base hits, and he's tied for first and runs scored. Fans giving it up for Jordan Walker down here in Jupiter. Uh, 
Adam, boy. Let's go. Had himself a day yesterday. Ended up going four for four. Had a chance, Chip, to hit for the cycle, but he decided to hit a second home run instead. Two home runs, a double. Also legged out an infield single. That blistered the outside corner. It's an even count. Well, for a kid who's trying to hit his way onto the team, Brad, he's certainly holding up his end of the bargain. Force their hand. That's all you can do at this point, and that's all Jordan has done. Alonzo gives chase. That one is going to sky out a play foul. Let's go, baby. And a ball and two strikes. Cardinals got back-to-back -back walks to start the inning. Two outs, still one nothing. New York. Well, if Senga ends up, but I know you got him at two strikes here. We've seen Jordan Walker be a pretty good two-strike hitter so far. If he goes back to that slider and leaves it up, watch out. Senga's telegraphing that pitch quite a bit. Swing and a miss, and Senga pitched out of it. There was the split, and the Redbirds strand a pair. Cardinals have... 17 players in the organization heading to the WBC. The most in all of baseball. Cardinals will be represented well. And it's nice to see, especially those two guys. I mean, to be expected after they came in first and third, as you mentioned, the MVP race, but tearing it up early in spring training. Arguably the most talented team that the USA has had in the uh, World Baseball Classic. This is Mark Canna leading off for the Mets, and that one's going to sneak up the middle for a leadoff base hit here in the second inning. So second hit for the Mets. Cano aboard to start the frame, and Tommy Pham is up. No shift, of course, in 2023. Yeah, a little bit of a difference. Maybe last year we see Gorman on the other side of the bag and takes that hit away. Canna just puts the ball in play, makes something happen. And if you're Jordan Montgomery, you've already got two ground ball outs and a ground ball hit. Get yourself another ground ball here off the bat of Tommy Pham. Who's looking for his first hit this spring? And Jordan gets ahead of him. No balls and a strike. What do you remember about Tommy Pham as a Cardinal? Competitor. I mean, I mean, that's a big thing with Tommy Pham. He competes like crazy. He was a guy that took him a while to get to the big leagues, but he's worked for every bit of what he's gotten. And he's just a guy that you give him a chance, you give him an opportunity, he's going to run with it. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do here with the Mets, closing in on eight years in the big leagues now. As long as it took him to get to the big leagues, that's a pretty impressive run that he's been on. That miss low for Tommy Pham. You mentioned opportunity. There is a chance for Tommy Pham on this club as a reserve outfielder. They have some uncertainty around Starling Marte. When's he going to be back? That's one of the bigger questions, right? He's dealing with that abdominal issue, had surgery. They're believing that he's going to be ready by opening day. Another ground ball. This one at third. Arenado fields. Fair ball. Stretch out by Goldie in time for out number one. He's amazing. I almost feel like uh, we've gotten to the point here with Nolan Arenado where it's like, eh, look at him go. He did that again. This play, any other third baseman in the league makes it. Ball narrowly avoids the bag. He makes the play on a run. He makes it look so simple. That's why he's the best third baseman in baseball, hands down. So another ground ball from Montgomery gets in the first out. Can is at second for Abraham Almonte. He's a well-traveled player. Ten different organizations for Abraham. But he's making the most of his chance with the Mets. He's got six hits in spring competition with a couple of RBIs. All you're trying to do, turn the heads. They give you a uniform, and he's had a bunch of them, as you mentioned. You try to keep it on as long as you can. Really nice changeup right there from Montgomery, too. He's showing the feel already early on for all of his pitches. Another ground ball, this one down the line and past Arenado. Canna will come home to score. And Almonte's good work at the plate continues. That extends the Mets' lead to 2 to nothing. So the really good changeup to get ahead of Almonte. This one cuts it a little bit, ends up coming in, and just allows Almonte to get that bad head out and hook it right down the line. So the Mets with a single run in the first one here in the second lead 2 nothing. 
And this is Tim Lo Castro. Lo Castro playing center for New York. And this one again past Arenado and headed for the left field corner. Back to back doubles for the Mets. And they quickly jump in front three to nothing. But another case here of just catching too much of the plate. Last time it was the change up to Almonte. This time it ends up being the sinker, ends up middle in. Wanted that pitch on the outer half, get that rollover. And with Nolan Arnato playing in, just sneaks past him. So it's 3 0 New York. This is Omar Narvaez. Cardinal fans will remember him, member of the Brewers. And a throwing air from Montgomery as Lo Castro broke from second to third and Hill score standing up. Uh, those are maddening right there. It, it, Monty did the right thing. He steps off. You are leading your third baseman who's running. Just got to take your time, make that good throw. Still had more time than he thought he did on this play. Ends up taking off. You hear everybody step off. And he ends up just throwing behind Nolan Arenado. It's a self-inflicted wound right there when it should have been an out. That's usually a strike. So a three-run second for the Mets, who lead four to nothing. Narvaez rolls that one foul and out of play. Mets moved on from James McCann. They brought in Narvaez from Milwaukee. And as you said, Brad, he's got the luxury of catching a terrific pitching staff. Yeah, it really does. I mean, this uh, the starting staff is good. Bullpen is strong. Anchored by Edwin Diaz, obviously, is the breaking ball right there from Montgomery. Swing and miss. But they've got all the pieces. The question is, uh, can money buy a championship? I mean, that's what the Mets and owner Steve Cohen are trying to find out. <laughs> First the one-two pitch. Yeah, tied up Narvaez. That was a good pitch. Montgomery's first strikeout, two men are down. So what you're saying is $476 million in one offseason doesn't go as far as it used to? Well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> We're going to find out. Cutter starts in uh, in off the plate, ends up tying him up. But, yeah, it's it's every uh, – I feel like every GM in baseball is saying, right, yeah, I can, I'd love to try to do that, what they're doing. They're spending like crazy, but it doesn't mean that it's going to translate to winning. they got a solid ball club, so we're going to find out. And remember, they almost signed Carlos Correa. Actually, I think they did, and then the physical popped up, and that contract was voided. Think about how much higher it. their payroll would have been had he joined the Mets. I know. A third time's a charm, apparently, when it comes yeah. to Correa. Signed with the Giants, ended up going with the, the Mets, and then ultimately landed with the Twins. But you're right. They were in on every free agent. That sounded like a strike, but missed. One ball, one strike for Jeff McNeil, who rolled out softly to second his first time up. This guy is as pesky a hitter as there is in the National League. It's funny because it, as you're saying that, I'm watching him. He's choked up about six inches. Those guys are maddening because you feel like whatever you throw, he's going to figure out a way to put it in play. And, well, that says uh, his 326 average, as you mentioned earlier, the batting champion in the NL last year kind of proves that's what he does. He'll slap it the other way. You throw something in, he can pull it. Did he go? Yeah. Nope. Only struck out 61 times last year, did McNeil. He's a unicorn in the game. I mean, they, really, you don't see a lot of guys like that off the, the top of the order, anywhere in the order. And this is what he does. He'll put together eight, nine, ten pitch at bats. And you know as a pitcher, these foul balls have a big effect on a pitcher. They do. They add up because they end up being just high leverage pitches. You got two strikes. You're trying to bury a guy. You're trying to make that perfect pitch. Then all of a sudden you miss off the plate. He works counts. Your pitch counts go up. So base is empty for McNeil. Three in for the Mets. And in and out of the glove of Tress Barrera. Couldn't hang on. Tough break. Had it by him. But we'll try again. Two and two. Oh. 
Jose Reyes, the only other Mets batting champion. Joining Jeff McNeil. And he rolls over toward first. Race to the bag and not in time. McNeil legs out an infield hit. Well, and that one right there, that's on Jordan Montgomery. It was a late break on that ground ball to the right side. You know, especially with anybody that's got some speed, you got to get over there quickly. Just that slight hesitation ends up beating him. Look well, close, though. The fourth hit of the inning. And now Dusty Blake's going to come out and chat with Montgomery, who's had a long inning. Four hits. The throwing error cost him a run. And a couple of balls down the third base line as well for the Mets. That's the thing, too. You, you look at the line, you say, well, that's a really rough inning. You watch it develop, and really, it's the ground balls down that left field line. A little ground ball right there to first they, that uh, McNeil is able to beat out. It hasn't been that big of an inning, but you want to be able to give him the opportunity to go out there and give him a breather as Roach ends up getting ready just in case this inning gets extended. Again, the first outing so far in Grapefruit League play uh, for Montgomery. So two innings is probably where they want him to be. And if you're looking for silver linings, he's getting the ball on the ground, That's which it. is what you'd want to do with this Cardinal infield exactly, defense. Exactly what you're looking for. These guys will get the job done for you. So Escobar up for the second time. He rolled out to Arenado to start the game. And down and in across the shoe tops. One ball, no strikes. Herrera tried to frame that. It was low. And the count 2 0 for the Mets third baseman. Thirty two pitches for Jordan now here in this second inning in total. And the automatic strike makes it three and one. Good sinker right there at the bottom of the zone. He stays there. That's ground balls all day. Now an up in the zone, but Escobar swung through it, so it's a full count. McNeil leads at first, and off he goes. Swing and a miss. Nice recovery for Montgomery. A couple of strikeouts in the second inning, but the Mets strike for four. And he's a little early for CB. Seven o'clock worked a little better. I think they got it all sorted out. Let's hope so. It's a long afternoon here in Jupiter. Four nothing. The Mets have an early lead. Nolan Gorman's going to lead off. Alec Burleson and Tres Pereira coming up against Kodai Senga, making his Mets debut today. Some good adjustments for Senga there after walking the first couple of batters. Looked like he was aiming the ball. Ended up coming back and getting two pretty good guys out. He got uh, Goldie to pop up, Nolan Arenado to fly out to right, and then ended up punching out Jordan Walker on that split finger we talked about. Nolan had a good day yesterday. Hit a home run. Those are his numbers so far this spring. And he laid off the split there. Two balls, two strikes. What makes the split so tough to recognize as a hitter? Just looks like the arm action, everything about it looks like fastball until the bottom drops out. And it's a pitch that is so difficult for guys to throw. A lot of players will tinker with it, but if your hands aren't the right size or it just doesn't feel right for you, it just doesn't tumble out of there. I tried to throw one for a little bit as I was working through different change-ups, and mine would always cut. 
as opposed to actually going away from the left-hander. It just wasn't effective. But it's one, it's also a pitch that you just don't see a ton. You know, so guys don't throw it a lot. It's very difficult to pick up. Full count for Gorman. And strike three outside corner. Nolan thought he earned ball four. CB Buckner says otherwise. And that's the second strikeout for Senga. A pitch on the corner could have gone either way. Ends up going the way of Senga as Gorman gets punched out by CB Buckner. So Alec Burleson, the hitter. We were talking about Alec before the game. I love what you said about Mr. Burleson. All he's done at every level is hit. That's it. The International League batting champion last year. This one on the ground is second. No trouble for out number two. So McNeil handles his first chance. Two up, two down, and Tres Barrera is coming up. So is the 2023 promotion schedule. It's packed with fan favorites like jerseys, bobbleheads, legendary player tributes, apparel, hats, and so much more. There's something for everyone in the 2023 season. Check out the full list at cardinals.com slash promotions. I don't think Alec wanted me to talk nice about him. He got out quick. Going to get into way more stuff with him. He'll come up again. Well, yeah, well I hope so. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Maybe this inning. With two outs, Barrera gets his third spring at back and takes outside. Wilson Contreras opened some eyes yesterday, right? Base hit, stretched a single into a double. All out hustle as this ball is launched to deep left. Back to the track, to the wall, and that ball is gone. Tres Barrera has hit a homer. A nice swing of the bat right there by Trace Barrera. And Chip, that was the slider that we kept talking about with Kodai Senga. The fact that he telegraphs it a bit. You can see it coming out of the hand. This thing just hangs up there, said hit me all over it. Barrera said, yeah, I'll do that for you. Every bit of it. I'm not sure whose eyes popped wider Pereira's or Narvaez behind the plate when that pitch was coming toward I, the glove. I got a feeling Senga had that too. Everybody wide-eyed. You know that feeling as a pitcher as soon as you let it go and you say, no, you want it back. You just right. wish that there was a string on it. So a solo home run gets the Cardinals on the board. Four to one is the score. Mason win the hitter. Wynn pops this one up in a shallow right. On comes Almonte. Out goes O'Neill. And the flying squirrel Jeff O'Neill makes the play. Cardinals get a Barrera homer. And Ali Marmol will join us when we come back. <laughs> to Jordan Montgomery back to work with Lindor, Alonzo, and Mark Kenna coming up for the Mets. Lindor hit a home run his first time up. Lindor in year three of a 10 year contract with the Mets. Talk about a bounce back year two for Lindor. You'd have to think that there's huge expectations after you sign that 10 year $341 million deal. First year didn't go well. Last year was great. And I would think too, Brad, pressure on the Mets. They had a 10 and a half game lead in the East last year and didn't win the division with DeGrom. With Max Scherzer, with Lindor and Alonzo and the like. Yeah, and I don't care how talented your team is. When you see it slipping away, that pressure really does creep in. A great year for them. Just ran out of gas. To short. Win will show off his arm. And in plenty of time for out number one. Again, Montgomery, Brad, getting the ball on the ground. That's a good sign. It really is. That time is the changeup. We've seen him get the ball to the ground uh, with the sinker as well. The damage that's been done against him outside of the Lindor home run. His first at-bat has all been on the ground. That'll bring up Pete Alonso. We were talking before the game. Pete Alonso and the Cardinals have some interesting history, don't they? Well, you know what? It was a fun year last year. The emotions did fly in one game as Nolan Arnato got brushed back on a pitch. I believe it was reliever Yoan Lopez. And uh, both sides cleared. And Pete Alonso and Stubby Clapp found themselves tangled up. Stubby the winner. 
Don't know if there was a belt given out to Stubby Clap, but there should have been if there wasn't. Uh, Pete Alonzo, though, you mentioned it before, the power, quite a talent. Big, strong guy out there. Check, check, cubby, cubby. Broken bat, rolled foul at third. Arenado got to that. You know, it's amazing. Now watching Arenado play every day. Most Major League third basemen don't get within a step of that ball. That ball was 15 feet past the third base bag, and he gloved it and was in position to make a play. And Cardinal fans have been so fortunate over the years as uh, new Hall of Famer Scott Rowland. You got to see that. Like, that's a play that Scott always made, that backhand with the rocket arm down the line. And uh, what, what you've noticed, uh, you okay. know, Chip, watching this team day in and day out is how he works on those plays. Like, the preparation, that's what the difference is when it comes to Nolan Arenado. One ball, two strikes for Pete Alonzo. Good try inside, but just missed. It's a perfect pitch right there. Like, that's where you had to miss. That's a, a sinker in. You got to make sure that you miss in off the plate. If you miss over the plate, you're in trouble. Got away with one there, and Alonzo fouled it straight back. At least that one was elevated. Didn't miss in the heart of the plate. So Alonzo uses his timeout. Check, check, one, two, one, two. Now back to work. One, two, three. You copy? I do hear the announcers. So we're good. Yeah, no, of course, of course. I just want to make sure that you hear me. Yeah, I hear them. Okay, I'll, I'll stand by until uh, they need it. Copy, copy. Base is empty for the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. Did he go? Nope. a tough take right there on that changeup from Jordan Montgomery. I really liked what we're seeing. And again, the box score is what it is. Scattered five hits against him, four runs. But the ball down in the zone, the action on the changeup, the ground balls as we've talked about, and his utilization of the fastball, both the four seam and the two seam. To third, Arenado's got that. And the throw right on the money. And that's out number two. So you mentioned the line score is the line score. What does Montgomery take out of this performance? Look, I know he's going to be mad. He gave up four runs. But what's he take out of it? Yeah, I think that Jordan's been around long enough, too, to maybe not be mad about an outing like this, even though you've given up four. I think what he takes out, he's done a good job commanding the strike zone. He's been getting ahead, and he's getting the ball on the ground. And with this Cardinals defense, that's going to lead to success like we saw in the second half last year. Five ground ball outs, a couple of strikeouts for Jordan so far today as he faces Mark Canna, who singled and scored to lead off the Mets second. Mark is another one of those pesky guys. Has led the league and hit by pitch two years in a row. Just always right up on the plate. You try to take away the inside, and all of a sudden it's catching an elbow or something. Yeah, his family crest has a Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> hit 28 call. times last year. 27 the year before. Swing and a miss. That was a good pitch. But on a team loaded with so many stars like the Mets have, this guy's a perfect complimentary player. Get on base. Get on base. You set the table for some of these other monsters they have in the lineup. Ball fouled at third. We'll try again. One ball, two strikes. Canna was a 13 homer man for New York. And this one dumped into center, and that will retire the side. O'Neill, a nice running catch, and the Mets are out in order in the third inning. 4 1, and as promised. I was fantastic with the Cardinals. Made 12 starts, had an ERA just north of two. And a, I mean, guy got the ball in game one of the postseason. Kind of tells you how solid he was for the Birds last year. And Brendan Donovan fouls the first one away. He walked his first time up. Oliver Marmol is downstairs wearing the headset. Ollie, how you doing, man? Doing well. How we doing up there? Well, we'd like it better if it was 4-1 us. That would be nice. I hear you. But it's early. Pop fly foul. Uh, 
First of all, I'd love to get your impressions of the first week of competition this spring. You went five and two. Yeah, it's been good. Uh, guys have gone about it really well. Um, the veteran guys are doing what the, you would expect them to do, and it's been fun to see some of the young guys step up and uh, compete. So, uh, so far, it's been a lot of fun to watch. Well, Ali, you bring up the uh, young guy. He's got a broken bat to Lindor. He fields it. Uh, look, nobody's talking about this kid, so I'll broach the subject. Jordan Walker uh, is having a uh, very decent camp to this point. <laughs> what have you seen out of this young man? He's been a lot of fun to watch. He has. He has. He's going about it really well. Um, there's a reason a, a lot of people are talking about this guy. Uh, he goes about it in a really professional manner. He's asking the right questions. And then he's performing. Uh, the day he had yesterday was impressive. Four for four with two homers. Hit the ball long ways, but it also beat out a single, uh, infield single. And he's just playing the game the right way. So it's been a lot of fun to watch. We'll continue to evaluate what we have. But he's uh, he's shown well so far. How hard is it to pump the brakes on the hype train for a kid that's <laughs> doing this in his first big league spring training? No, nah, it's, it's part of it, and it's expected. That's what the fan base is supposed to do. And uh, there's reasons to be excited. Um, this is a, a young kid who's only going to continue to get better, but we're watching uh, a pretty good skill set right now. Well, you talked about coming into this, wanting to have a competitive camp. Ollie, that's exactly what you've got right now. It seems like a lot of guys are just putting oh. their name in the hat. That's exactly it. I think we talk about it every year as far as being competitive. Uh, there's a lot of open spots. The outfield is, is wide open, and guys have come in ready. Uh, Dylan's come in ready, T.O., Newt, um, obviously we just talked about Jordan Walker, uh, and I'll tell you what, T.O., his swing is looking better and better. Um, it'll be fun to continue to watch him this spring and then throughout the season. How hard is it to manage your club, Oliver, knowing that uh, you're going to lose Arenado and Goldie and Miles Michaelis and Adam Wainwright for two weeks? It's, um, it, it's not a concern, honestly. Uh, these guys are... Real pros understand what they need to do to stay sharp. And the reality is they've expressed uh, when they've done it before, they've started off the season feeling even better than ever. So uh, this is a great experience for them, one we're supportive of. And um, our, our only thing and our hope is that they stay healthy. Ollie, what was your take uh, our first time we saw in Grapefruit action, uh, Grapefruit League action, Jordan Montgomery? What would you think about him today? Uh, did a nice job. I know he gave up a four spot, but... Um, he did some things really well. That sinker plays. Uh, he left one up in the zone, um, and then an off-speed pitch to Lacastro for the double, I believe. But um, overall, that thing's moving quite a bit. Four seam, he used it well. Doubled up on the changeup, um, late in the count, in that three-one count. But he, he did some things that uh, you can get excited about for sure. And a familiar face now on the mound for the Mets, huh? No doubt. <laughs> Love that guy. Did a really nice job for us and uh, solidified the rotation last year. Settled everybody in. Uh, a real pro. Um, man, he competes well. And we're going to get a chance tomorrow in play. We're going to get our first look at Jack Flaherty. Is that correct? That is correct. And um, he's uh, he's feeling a lot better. Um, this is a guy that, I mean, we expect a lot out of, and he expects even more out of himself. He's prepared. He's in a really, really good spot mentally and physically, so we're we're looking forward to seeing him tomorrow. Yeah, he was supposed to pitch today, right, Ollie? That, that, that was that's the original right, plan? That's right, yeah. Um, I wouldn't even call it flu-like symptoms. He was just a little under the weather. We wanted to make sure he was hydrated, so we just pushed him back a day. No reason to rush, but overall, if it was up to him, he'd be on the mound right now. Um, I, I made the decision to just push him back a day. Well, Brad's told me that hydration is very important <laughs> in spring training. Play, it's key. So that's, it's, it's really important to know that Jack's on track to pitch tomorrow. That'll no be doubt. exciting. As strike three will end the inning. Oliver, appreciate all your time. We'll see you tomorrow. You got it. Appreciate it, guys. Cardinals skipper Oliver Marmol, 4-1. Mets have the lead. The cast your vote at cardinals.com slash HOF. Voting closes April 21st. We head to the New York fourth new pitcher on the mound for the Cardinals. Ryan Helsley follows Jordan Montgomery today. Certainly a coming out party last year for Ryan Helsley emerged as one of the most dominant relievers in the game. You see the numbers there in 54 games for the birds ended up picking up 19 saves as well. And he's greeted rudely by Tommy Pham, a first pitch rope up the middle. That's not good timing as I'm talking nicely as he leaves one right down the middle, serve right back where it came from. Stop doing that. I That's caused some problems earlier That's today. That's on me. That's on me so far. Just 95 mile an hour fastball right down the middle. All about Helsley's arm, strikeout guy, third highest strikeout percentage among relievers last year. Edwin Diaz of the Mets struck out over half of the batters he faced. Yeah, incredible, and he was rewarded with a five-year contract north of 100 million as well. 
some numbers that you're a reliever in baseball. You say, I can, I can make what? <laughs> okay, perfect. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. There was a long time where everybody in the bullpen wanted to be a starter because that's where all the money was. Well, there's still plenty of money as a starting pitcher, but bullpen guys are getting paid well. We're seeing teams lean heavier on their bullpen earlier in games. That's maybe the biggest revolution in the game, I think, in the last 15, 20 years, right? How bullpen guys are used more than starters are used, if you will. Yeah, and I know it drives people nuts, but the advanced analytics, when you're talking about third time around, you just don't see starters face the order for a third time as much as possible. So you oftentimes on a given night, you need four different guys out there that you can hand the ball to and believe that you're going to get out. And teams have so many guys out in their bullpen throwing 100 miles an hour. I mean, you look at the Cardinals. You, you've got Helsley. You've got Jordan Hicks. Uh, we, we've got a chance in this ball game to see Wilking Rodriguez, a Rule 5 uh, pick that the Cardinals picked up from the Yankees. He throws 100 as well. Got so many good arms down there. Almonte takes one in the dirt. Count even two balls, two strikes. Think we'll ever see another 250 inning starting pitcher no. in Major League Baseball? No. no, I don't think so at all. Do you? Not the way it's going. I would love to. I yeah. would love to see it come back. And we see, I, I believe that the starting pitcher is so important for the game of baseball. If you're a fan, you want to come out, you know who you're going to see. You'd love to be able to think that the guy that is throwing the first pitch has a good chance to shake hands at the end of it and throw the last one. We just. We're kind of seeing the end of uh, a dying breed there. And look, Adam Wainwright coming into his, his final season. He's a guy that when he starts a game, you expect that he's got a chance to be there. There's not too many Waynos out there. Flip back to first on a full count pitch for Abraham Almonte, who doubled home a run and scored back in the second for the Mets. Montgomery went three innings five hits four runs didn't walk anybody struck out two, but a lot of ground balls as that's taken high a single and a walk versus Helsley and that's how the Mets fourth starts. Get a look at a couple of the Cardinal starters there. Miles Michaelis, he'll be heading off with Team USA, and we'll get a chance to see Steven Matz in action tomorrow. Jack Flaherty will pitch as well, but the first time we'll see Matz also, and really look forward to another uh, a full year of Steven Matz. He's the only Cardinal starter that's currently under control past this year, so they're going to be relying heavily on him. We got a chance to see him come back out of the bullpen last year, and certainly a weapon, but he's here to start and hopefully take the ball 30-plus times. Tim Locastro with two on takes a little low. My point about the 200 plus innings threshold, you know how many guys pitched 200 innings in Major League Baseball last year? I'll say less than 10. I'll, I'll go with six, five. Wow. 200 innings. Miles Michaelis was one of them, as you know. So, yes, the game has changed as that's rolled foul past Cora, the Mets third base coach. We'll try again. Two balls and a strike. Well, and again, to your point, you understand why teams are doing what they do, and the numbers bear these out. But I, I believe that maybe if we got back to getting to the point where the expectation for the starter was a little bit different, you don't see any anymore. And look, results are results. You're getting out, so you're figuring out a way to do it. But you don't see that first time around, okay, establish your fastball. Second time around, starter shows you something different. It's kitchen sink early on now. That shaves off a corner. Good pitch. Two balls, two strikes. That pitch right there, that slider from Ryan Helsley, one of the biggest difference makers for him. Always had that in the back pocket, but he didn't have the ability to finish it. And he had the bad knee, as you, you know, he had surgery on that, allowed him to clear that up last year, clear that front side. Rifled toward Walker and left. That's over Jordan's head and up against the wall. That's going to score Tommy Pham. Almonte is going to be stopped at third, and Tim Locastro has a couple of doubles today. He's also picked up his second RBI, and the Mets extend their lead to 5-1. to one. Well, Ryan Helsley follows up that painted slider with a 97-mile-an-hour fastball right down the middle. Locastro, very quick hands on this, gets it over the head of Jordan Walker, and the Mets keep on rolling here. Mets last year, second in average in Major League Baseball, fifth most runs scored in the Major Leagues. And one reason why, 
they seldom struck out. They put the ball in play. That one off the glove of Helsley, but the flip to first in time for Donovan. That's a 1 4 3 put out. No advance of the runners, and Narvaez is out number one. And here's Mr. McNeil, who, as we told you, was the poster child for that seldom striking out stat for New York. Yeah, I know that we're, we're uh, you know, watching baseball right now, and there are a lot of teams, a lot of players that strike out a ton. I think that there's still incredible value on putting pressure on the opposition, make them make that play, and having that two-strike approach, something that the Mets do very well. By the way, the Cardinals as a team didn't strike out a lot either. I think that there's a lot of value there. So we'll see the infield in for the Redbirds here with Jeff McNeil up. A lot of hitting angles for McNeil, who's got an infield knock today. And he jumps on the first one and skies it toward Tyler in left center. Good running catch. Tag at third. Almonte will score standing up. And McNeil puts it in play with a sack fly. Let's have another run. Two in the fourth. And six in total. It's a 6-1 game. And that's your point. Put in play. Yeah, make something happen right there. Shortened up, got himself a fastball, and was able to serve it into center field. Lo Castro held it second on that fly ball out, and Escobar will be the Mets hitter. He's 0 for 2. That sunk out of sight. Pretty pitch. Strike one. A very nice breaking ball from Helsley. We're seeing him right now. Breaking ball looks like he's got some good feel for it. Burying it. Getting on top of it when he wants to. Fastball command. A little erratic. Has found himself in the middle of the zone and more with that pitch. This is his second spring appearance. He pitched on the 26th against the Marlins and struck out a batter in that inning. A little tougher time here. Single walk, double, ground out, fly out. He's just getting his work in, Chip. That's all he's doing. Right. I know this come season start end of March against the Blue Jays in a tight ball game. That's the guy I want to see trotting in out of the bullpen. Yeah, the traditional Cardinals Blue Jays opening day matchup. Oh, boy. Major League Baseball. Just like your grandparents <laughs> always told you about, isn't it? First time ever they'll open up against an AL team. I don't care who you're playing. It is a special sight, as you know, on opening day in St. Louis. Mile high fly ball. Alec Burleson's got that one measured up. His glasses are gleaming on this beautiful sunny Sunday. And that takes care of the Mets in the fourth. They score two more. Stick around. Jordan Walker's coming up. It's 6-1 Mets. They lead 6-1 as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Nolan Arenado, Jordan Walker, and Nolan Gorman are coming up. Well, the Mets made some moves to solidify their pen. Brooks Rayleigh in. Traded from him from the Tampa Bay Rays. 60 games for them last year. Also pitched the big leagues with Houston, Cincinnati, and broke in with the Cubs. Rifle just foul by Nolan Arenado. And the count to him evens. One ball, one strike. I believe Tony LaRusso always said that you build your bullpen from the ninth inning forward, right? And with guys like Quintana, Senga, Verlander, and Scherzer, as that ball's lined over third for Nolan. Big turnaround first, and he'll throw out an anchor and pull up there. Wonder how many innings guys like Rayleigh are going to see in the Mets bullpen if their starters perform the way they think they will. Yeah, the, the hope is not a ton, right? But you want to be able to build yourself up. They, they've obviously got a very good anchor at the back end of that pad in Edwin Diaz. As we mentioned, they signed him to a five-year, $102 million deal. Let's get another look at Nolan Arenado driving his ball into left field. But they've got some good pieces down there. But we were just talking about how starting pitchers don't go as deep. I bet if the Mets are looking at it, say, go as long as you want with these guys they've got. Walker, first pitch swing right at the second base bag. And that's a tailor-made double play. So Arenado erased on the 4-3 twin killing. Two quick outs here in the Cardinals fourth. And Nolan Gorman coming up. Nolan 
Gorman struck out to start the Cardinals second so he's all for one today. I feel like there's a lot of guys that we could have this conversation around. Certainly the entire outfield is one of them. But I believe that Nolan Gorman, with the power that he has from the left side, is a huge key that bring this, this roster from, from very good to potentially great with the power that he's got. Left-handed balance, you've said as well. And how did Nolan fare against left-handed pitching last year? You know what? I, I think that he's working on hanging in there even more. He had his struggles early on. His main struggle was just against a fastball. It wasn't even necessarily the handedness of it. It was right-handers, left-handers, the heater, especially elevated in the zone. We've seen early on in camp his ability to go out there and change his swing a little bit. It looks more level. You mentioned it before. He got his first home run of the spring yesterday, a two-run shot as the Cardinals beat the Nats. Nationals. So the, the key is going to be for him just can he put the ball in play with authority and can he stay on the fastball as he waves at the slider. That was a filthy pitch. Cardinals get a hit nothing else in the fourth. Mets lead it by five. I'm slash 50 50 for tickets. Chip and Brad with you in Jupiter. Brad talked about camp opportunity with Carlos Mar with uh, excuse me Oliver Marmol a few moments ago. One of those Opportunities is the bullpen from the left side, and here's Jojo Romero. Hey, we saw Jojo Romero. He came over at the deadline uh, from the Phillies as Edmundo Sosa ended up going the other way. We saw him at 15 games, and he found himself in some bigger games down the stretch. You know he's got the big arm from the left side, got that good breaking ball that he could throw in there for a strike, but fastball is usually around that 96, 97 uh, range, and if he's commanding the strike, so again, he's got a good chance. Lindor chops that foul. He's one for two with a home run today. Just joining us, Jordan Montgomery started, went three innings, gave up five hits, four runs. A lot of ground balls for Jordan in his spring debut today. Ryan Helsley just pitched the fourth inning, gave up two runs, two hits, and a walk. And now Romero, the third Cardinals pitcher of the day, to face the three, four, five hitters for the Mets. Feel like that Jordan Montgomery, uh, the the outing, it reads a lot worse than it looks. He looked pretty solid. Fouled away by Lindor, and he's still behind. O oh, and two. Swing and a miss. Pretty pitch. And Lindor over the top of that strikes out for the first time. Good start to the New York fifth inning. A really solid changeup from Jojo Romero. We talked about the fastball. You got to be ready for 96 97. We got to be ready for him to pull the string on that one. Gets the punch out. Quiet day so far for Pete Alonso at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Hit high in the air toward left. Walker on the run. He shields his eyes. He looks up, and that one's going to go. Pete Alonso has hit a home run. Well, Chip, that one's on you with that quiet day talk. Yep. Look at you again. We're not doing so well, are we? No, no. Talk nice about guys that get out quickly, saying somebody's being quiet. Loud home run on a slider here from Jojo Romero. Just didn't have the bite on it. You see the setup behind the plate. Barrera wanted that thing down and in. Did not get there. I mean, that ball looked like it was five inches off the ground, but you could see the extension and the strength of Alonzo to drive that out to left. Well, that's that 40 home run power that we saw last year that was third most in baseball tied with Mike Trout. You know that he's got it. You can't make any mistakes near the zone to that guy. You got to set him up well. So the Mets seven runs on eight hits today. As that shaves off a corner, one ball, two strikes for Mark Canna.
driven foul. Romero taking that pitch clock all the way down to the last second before he turns it loose. We saw the other day Max Scherzer having a little fun with the pitch clock, trying to figure out some different things of what he could get away with. Batter steps out as soon as he stepped back in. He tried to, to quick pitch. And we've talked about this from the pitcher's perspective. It's an adjustment for the hitters, too. Mark Kahn is a perfect example. He was as deliberate as they came in his pre-pitch setup. I really do believe it's going to be a bigger adjustment, wholesale adjustment for the hitters than it is the pitchers. For the most part, most of the pitchers are not an issue. You get a lot of hitters that take forever. Spoken like a true pitcher. That's by the correct. Way. Yep. yep. But, but it's funny, Max Scherzer the other day testing the limits of the new rules, right? Trying to see what he can get away with, what's legal, what's not. Might as well test it now before you think that you have a uh, little trick that you're going to break out in a big spot in September and then you get called for it. He did during that, had a double play erased. You get a. A good breaking ball right there from Jojo Romero to get the punch out of Canna. But uh, he had a double player race because of a time violation. But you're going to go down to the wire. You're going to see what's called and what's not. The other one was a hitter called time stepped out. Scherzer never stepped off the mound. And as soon as the batter got in the batter's box, he delivered a pitch. I mean, truly yep. two seconds later. And that was obviously disallowed. Yep. And it ended up uh, all the teams around baseball got a warning on that one as JoJo does a good job getting to the right side. And Goldie makes the play. And that ends the New York fifth. They attack on a run on a Pete Alonzo homer. Wholesale defensive changes for the Mets. We'll get to those in a moment. First, Alec Burleson digs in against Drew Smith, the new Mets pitcher. Well, we were talking about Alec Burleson a little bit earlier and how he's just hit at every single level. We saw at 331 last year in the International League, also had 20 home runs to add to it, and a guy that's firmly in the mix in the outfield here. The big time competition. You got a guy too. Burleson's got the power, but he also has that ability. He doesn't punch out a lot. Only punched out 14.3 percent of the time at AAA. You don't usually see the guy that has that kind of power that doesn't strike out a ton. Breaking ball spun out of Smith's hand badly. There, two balls at a strike. Alec grounded out his loan at bat today, so he's 0 for 1. Lifted left side. Beatty and Davis in foul ground and sliding at the back slope of the pitcher's mound was Beatty, who couldn't make the play. Beatty, one of the defensive changes for the Mets. Something you don't have to worry about in big league ballparks, pitchers' mounds on the field of play anymore. No, these are always scary, too. When you're seeing one of your guys go out there running just that change in level, you're taking a full sprint, and then all of a sudden you hit that mound can be dangerous. Fortunately, he's good to go. Beatty tried to hit his way on this Mets club with Escobar entrenched as their starting third baseman. They really think that kid can rake. Burleson had a good rip at that and fouled it straight back. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, Beatty, one of their top prospects. Obviously, the top prospect in the organization for the Mets is Francisco Alvarez. Got a chance to see him last year, made his debut, and one of the best, one of the best catchers, one of the best bats at the position potentially in the game. Didn't get the fastball, a swing and a miss, and Burleson is down on strikes. Five Cardinals have swung and missed through four and a third innings today. One away, and here's Tress Barrera. Ronnie Mauricio has checked in at shortstop for the Mets. Mark Vientos has replaced Pete Alonso at first. Jalen Davis is the new Mets left fielder. Barrera, the sum total of the Cardinals offense today, a long home run to left. Uh, Barrera got a good slider right there from Smith. It was a backup slider that was elevated in the zone off of Kodai Sanga that he drove to deep left for that home run. Senga making his Mets debut today went two innings gave up 
the Barrera home run walked the first two batters he faced but got out of trouble in the first inning as this one on the ground is second no trouble there Barrera is retired four out number two there was a huge contingent of Japanese media here to watch Singa's every move before the game and during his two inning stint today well, certainly excitement around him in Japan with the media in New York as you believe that you've got one of the more electric arms. And I, I thought that Senga bounced back really well after those couple of walks. He ended up getting Goldie and Arnato. That one smoked by Mason Wynn at second, and he'll reach with two outs here in the fifth inning. So as exciting as it was for Mets fans and the Japanese media to see Senga here, excitement's building in Japan for Lars Nootbaar. He was part of Team Japan in the WBC. Look at who he took a picture with. He's making good friends, isn't he? Shohei Otani and Lars Newbar, the big smile on Nude's face that he carries with him 24-7. Believe he sleeps like that. <laughs> um, I know how excited he is to go play and represent Japan in the World Baseball Classic. And looking forward to that to kick off. It's fun to see intense baseball early on. Brendan Donovan's walked and grounded out today. Let's see what he can do with a runner at first. Mason Wynn, big lead. And that one is lined over short and into left center field for a hit. Wynn glides into third. Boy, he went first to third easily, Brad, and a ball hit to shallow left center. Well, a good job by Donovan to drive this thing into left. And you're right, for all the talk we've had about Jordan Walker, Mason Wynn is having himself a monster camp as well. Good swing right there from Donovan, who showed off some early power right past Ronnie Mauricio over at shortstop. And Wynn is just cruising. Easy speed for him. He swung the bat well. He's shown off the arm. A lot of good things for the young Mason Wynn in this camp. Well, Tyler O'Neill could make it a ball game with a long ball here. First and third with a couple of outs. Well, as we talked to Ollie Marmol in the bottom of the third, he seems very happy with the swing and the progress of Tyler O'Neill, another guy that's going to head off to the World Baseball Classic as he's going to represent Team Canada. Good take there. Think about Tyler O'Neill, Chip. When he's on, his hands are just so fast. Something we saw in 2021, he was recognizing pitches so well, just letting the ball travel, trusting the hands, letting it get deep and driving it. In the air to right, but he got under it. Almonte will battle the breeze, blowing the ball back toward the infield. And that'll retire the Cardinals in the fifth. Official game in Jupiter. I mean, they're looking for him. As we talked about earlier, this is a guy, the lone starter that is signed past 2023 in this rotation. Looking forward to getting our first eyes on him in 2023. Hicks will face the bottom part of the Mets order in the sixth inning. Almonte, Locastro, and Narvaez are scheduled for Buck Showalter's boys. They lead 7-1 on eight hits. Montgomery, Helsley, and Romero. The yeah, third pitched. Yeah, third outing of the spring here for Jordan Hicks. Chip first outing, he dealt with some uh, some issues as far as his command goes. Ended up walking three in that first one. Scattered three hits in his second outing. Looking for a clean one here against the Mets. Almonte's had a good day today. He's walked. He's doubled. He's scored two, and he's knocked in one. And 99 on the inside corner. Good luck with that. Not much you're going to be able to do with that. The only thing that you're going to do if you're Almonte with that pitch, if you swing at it, is probably slam it off your shin. New battery for the Birds with Hicks on the mound. Ivan Herrera behind the plate. As that one triple digits, but too high evens up the count. Two and two. I just one time want to know what that feels like. To let go of a baseball and see triple digits on the radar gun that didn't have anything to do with the batter hitting it. And it's happening so frequently now, and as you said, so effortlessly by so many more. Well, we're, we're, building, we're building these freak athletes now. You got kids at, at an early age that are, are learning the velocity. I think that now the big key is, how do you do that? How do you build up that speed, and how do you keep them healthy? Because that's the hard part. We're, guys blow out. 
fly ball center. O'Neill turned the wrong way, recovers, shy of the track. Nice play by Tyler. Not an easy play, not a cloud in the sky, but he makes the grab for out number one. A couple of adjustments along the way, as we've talked about. It's a big sky out here in Florida. It's a huge outfield. Anyhow, this ball's hit pretty well. He breaks back, turns his back, opens up to the baseball at the last minute and makes the play. So Hicks has his first out. Almonte retired for the first time. That brings up Tim Locastro, who's picked up a pair of doubles in RBIs. Yeah, I think that's the, the great challenge for the sport. As you said, the freak athletes, the guys that can throw so hard, how do you keep them healthy? Can the elbow, the shoulder, the body hold up? Throwing 100 miles an hour. 2,000 times a year. Yeah, well, and there's certainly there's a lot of work that goes into it. We get the opportunity to see here uh, on uh, as you're watching on TV and Cardinal fans, I know how dedicated you are. You're watching all these games. You see the fruits of the labor, mm -hmm. but you don't get to see the work that goes in to make this happen. These guys are in there nonstop trying to get themselves ready and keep themselves healthy. Perfect peg up the middle. Brendan Donovan got the friendly hop off the ricochet off the front slope of the mound. And Hicks has his second out. Lo Castro retired for the first time. On Saturday, May the 6th, Bush Stadium hosts the 18th annual Purina Pooches in the Ballpark Day. Come enjoy a ball game with man's best friend beside you. A limited number of tickets are on sale now at cardinals.com slash pooches. Here's Narvaez. The former Brewer is 0 for 2 today. That's got one in the first, three in the second, two in the fourth, and one in the fifth. The Cardinals' run came on a Tress Barrera homer in the second. Want to see now with Jordan 2 0 count here. A couple of balls that ended up missing arm side. See him make that adjustment, get on top of it, just rushing his delivery a little bit. It's the adjustment right there you wanted to see. Just the, the difference in timing of getting that arm up when the foot hits the ground. That's a difference at this level, isn't it? When you know you're out of sync, can you self-correct pitch sure. by pitch? For sure, and that's what, one of the things that's been so fun to watch over the years with Adam Wainwright is a guy and another great adjustment right there. You get a sinker at 101 miles an hour at the bottom of the zone is you watch a lot of the young guys that make the same mistake over and over again. A nice compact delivery, and you see the arm is up when the foot is down. Slowly hit towards second. Very impressive inning for Mr. Hicks. Three up, three down for the Mets in the top of the inning. Hard to enjoy a 7-1 lead. Here's an interesting fellow for New York. Man with a great nickname, Tommy Hunter. Tommy Two Towels is what they called him. The players had the, uh, the nickname weekend, and apparently they were playing somewhere. And Tommy Hunter came out of the bathroom. They have towels there ready after you take a shower. And the towels were smaller there. And he needed two of them. Huh. And he comes out and he yells to the team, Tommy, two towels. And it's stuck. Paul Goldschmidt, the hitter, takes down. Once terrified to think what would happen had Bartolo Colon been in that particular locker room. I won't, uh, I won't guess how many towels it takes, but you better be good at Hopefully he was a Boy Scout tying a few knots. <laughs> <laughs> strike to Goldschmidt. One ball, two strikes. Again, we mentioned it earlier for Nolan, for Paul Goldschmidt. This will be their final spring game with the Cardinals. They'll work out a bit tomorrow, Ollie told us before the game, and then make their way to join Team USA in the World Baseball Classic. And the hope is for, for Team USA that it's a long run in the World Baseball Classic. An incredibly talented team. As you mentioned, Goldie, Arenado, Wayno, Michael is all representing the Cardinals. Strike three, Goldschmidt rung up. And that's how the home sixth begins for Ali's Redbirds. One up, one down. Pretty good spot right here, down and away. Catches the corner, sinker just came back. Well, the Mets have an excellent bullpen. They have an excellent starting staff. It's easy to see why on paper 
There are some who think the Mets are going to dethrone the Braves for the National League Eastern honors as Motter skies one out toward left. Davis is there. He'll make the play. Jalen's got that easily. And that is out number two. And Jordan Walker's up for the third time. Let's see what the kid can do today as he looks to reach base for the first time. Yeah, four for four yesterday. We mentioned a couple of home runs. The double legged out an infield single as well. Today he punched out, grounded into a double play. You actually want to see how he, he responds on days like this. Been nothing but impressive so far this camp. Swung at the first one again. Rolled out towards short. And the peg to first is high, but on the mark. And Tommy two towels gets one, two, three in order and sends us to the seventh with the Mets in front. Brad on the mound with left-hander Zach Thompson. Zach Thompson, we saw him in 22 games last year with the Redbirds, made his debut against the Cubs in June. He got a four-inning save in that one, and he found himself firmly entrenched at the back end of the bullpen. Good fastball, mid to upper 90s. The big breaking ball as well. He's been working on a slider, and a guy right now that you'd have to believe that is going to be part of this pen, but certainly has the ability to start for you, as that's what he was drafted to do in the first round out of Kentucky. Brett Beatty leads off the New York seventh. Beatty, a good looking young hitter. Homered in his first big league game in Atlanta, the heat of a pennant race against the Braves last year. And drives this ball the other way to left. That's going to get to the warning track and to the wall. And on cue, Brett Beatty has an extra base hit, and it's lefty versus lefty, Brad. And that's how the seven starts. Yeah, if you're the Mets, you're going to love that stroke right there from Beatty. This is a fastball. It's away from Thompson. Catch the uh, by Thompson. It catches a little bit more of the plate than maybe he wanted, but that ability by Brett Beatty to let that ball travel and drive it the other way with authority is impressive. So Moises Gomez has taken over and left for the Cardinals. Oscar Mercado is in center. We'll get you the rest of the changes in a moment as Mark Vientos is the hitter and takes a strike. The big bender from Thompson that we we're talking about, the ability to steal a strike with that, and with two strikes, he can bounce it, get you to swing over it. Yentos, a Florida kid out of Pembroke Pines, Florida, just 23 years old. And he's rung up. C.B. Buckner takes care of Vientos, and that is out number one. Three benders in a row from Zach Thompson. He went back to it here with two strikes. Get the call on the outside corner from C.B. Buckner. That thing is a, a good break. You see it kind of pop up out of the hands, but it has so much break to it. And he's got the ability to throw his fastball off of that. He can elevate with the heater also. Here's another big time Mets prospect, Ronnie Mauricio. You know, this guy reminds me of physically Alfonso Soriano. A good call. Raw talent, raw power. Mauricio having a very nice camp so far. He's got three home runs, 15 total bases coming in. One ball, one strike for Mauricio. 6-3. Twenty one years of age. And as you'd guess, a shortstop from the cradle of shortstop San Pedro de Macaris in the Dominican Republic. That's headed for the bullpen. Good guard duty down there. What a great sliding catch. Not just down there for looks, okay? It's not there to just chat up the fans. You're there to protect that catcher behind. you got to be able to make a play, and he makes a good one down the line. See the fist pump? Met signed this kid at 16 years of age. That was back in 2017. 
Don't believe he's played yet above double A, so a chance for him to get to triple A with the Mets. Jose Peraza, not in the on deck circle. Doesn't matter as Mauricio strikes out. Back to back strikeouts for Zach Thompson. Well, Thompson does it again right here. This time elevates with that fastball that we were talking about. So when you're thinking about that big breaking ball that he has, you're trying to see it up. That's why that four seam fastball at the top of the zone plays so well with that combination of the curveball. Barraza grounds to short. And a nice job by Thompson to give up the leadoff double and get the next three Mets hitters in order. Seventh inning stretch in Jupiter. The Mets enjoy a six run lead. Four, three, four, five, nine thousand, or online at cardinals.com slash magazine. It's gotten late here in Jupiter. Home seventh, seven one Mets. Sam Coonrod is on the mound for New York. He's the sixth pitcher deployed by Buck Showalter today. Well, Sam Coonrod was with the Phillies last year, 12 games with them, and he was let go very late in this offseason, picked up by the Mets, and uh, he's finally healthy again. His shoulder feels good. A bullet hit toward first. Nice play. Vientos and Coonrod with PFP in every pitcher's mind this early in spring makes the play for out number one. If you mess up a PFP in spring training, shame on you. That's all you're doing half the day is... PFP for those that don't know pitcher fielding practice that's exactly what you're doing all of spring is covering first bases coonrod has got himself a good opportunity here with the Mets seen about a uh, hundred miles an hour already in spring training another good arm they can add to that back end of the pen Alec Burleson the batter Alec 0 for 2 on the day yeah we've got the Cardinals and Astros here from Jupiter tomorrow you heard Ali Marmol say that Jack Flaherty will pitch in that game. Steven Matz as well. We'll look forward to that. And a rope hit toward the Cardinal bullpen foul. And quickly it's nothing in two. Certainly Sam Coonrod with some St. Louis ties. Born in St. Louis. Ended up going to school at SIU Carbondale. Also active in a lot of the big league impact events. Adam Wainwright's charity. He was teammates with Kyle Gibson, who is the vice president of big league impact. So doing a lot with that organization. They do fantastic work. You're right. He's throwing harder than I remember him throwing last year with the Phillies. Talked about it. It's the first time he said his shoulder felt healthy. He got to the point where he'd be digging into all the hot stuff you put on your shoulder. You'd actually see it at times coming through his jersey. He'd have that red hot, the stuff that you put on your arm to just heat it up. Said he doesn't have to now. Brotherson went down and got that, and it's waffled in center. And Alec Burleson went down and combed that ball into straightaway center field, and he's got his first hit with one out here in the inning. Well, the key with Alec Burleson is just don't talk about how good of a hitter he is, and then he serves one into center field, goes down and gets it. Playing very deep in center, not able to get to that thing. So Ivan Herrera who took over behind the plate for Tres Barrera gets his first at bat today. Barrera had a nice day with a home run. Let's see what Herrera can do. A run on five hits for the Cardinals, seven runs, nine hits for the Mets today. Well, Von Herrera still a, a very highly thought of prospect in the Cardinals organization. We got a chance to see him last year make his major league debut. Cardinals obviously go out and pick up Wilson Contreras. They bring him in for the foreseeable future, but organization certainly still high on Herrera. Cardinals have four more games left with the Mets. 
this spring March 10th March 15th and then March 25th I think those are going to be the most fascinating games you'll have a real good idea of how the managers want to put their club together how they're going to play and especially with as we've said so many times so many guys returning from the WBC they're going to want game action they are for sure and that's a good time too if you're still at that point where you're trying to figure out your roster and who are the guys that are making the club well late in spring training that's where your starters are going deeper and deeper into the games that's where you're utilizing your relievers in real game action like you would during the season so to me that's the best chance to get a look at some of your young players that might have a chance to make a ball club Alvarez got smoked on that foul ball let's see where it got him Ooh. Catchers are tough, boy. Just take a beating back there and come back and do it again the next day. All because you raised your hand once as a kid. I'll do it. What's the old saying? Never volunteer for anything. <laughs> Catchers are living proof of that. Herrera, nice at bat. He earns a walk. And in a 7 1 game. Cardinals now have Mason Wynn coming up with two aboard and one out. Well, Mason Wynn singled his last time up. It has put up good numbers, certainly offensively. Came in, he's hitting 500 on camp. And you look at what he's doing defensively. He's ranging, he's showing off the arm. We've seen him throw the ball 100 miles an hour across the diamond, just showing out in his spring training, first big league camp. What kind of necklace is he wearing, Brad? You're our resident jewelry expert well it's a very nice one I'll tell you that and he he wears it well and I'll have to do a little bit of extra research to see exactly what the materials are my favorite necklace story in a big league game was remember Yoannis Cespedes oh yeah playing the Braves got caught in a rundown between first and second slid into the second base bag his chain broke and when I say it was a chain that's kind of being generous it was all diamonds <laughs> the chain breaks and diamonds scatter all over the infield no have to call timeout the umpires are picking up chains and put them <laughs> in the back pocket guys are stuffing them in their uniform pants of course everything was returned to you at the time but that had to be a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar slide you know what don't wear it <laughs> well that's yeah that's it's certainly uh, true if that could happen i don't think Mason's in that category that's, yet, but that's a pretty good yeah, start. It's nice. We're going to find out about that thing. Chase the high heat. And that is out number two. Wins down on strikes. And we go back to the top of the order. <laughs> Uniel Quetacuto is going to be your batter with two aboard. I think Albert Pools had a at bat. I believe it was last year, actually, where his chain broke while he was swinging. And I forget who the home plate umpire was. They took it and put it in his back pocket for him. He seemed pretty happy about that. I think that he returned it. Yeah, the umpire probably leaning to one side, of depending course. on which pocket. The, yeah, right. Pretty big chain there. Yeah. But Akuto quickly down two strikes seven one Mets or in the seventh inning and pop back toward Brad's car out of play. We'll try again. It's still 0 and 2. It's a rental. I'm sure it'll be fine. Mercado on deck Cardinals fell behind in the first on a Lindor home run. The Mets got three more in the second and it's been uphill sledding ever since. To the left side. Beatty has that roll off his glove, and all hands are safe. <laughs> Young third baseman had a ways to go off the line, couldn't make the play, and the Cardinals still have life. The bases are loaded with two outs. Just a bounce that ends up catching Beatty in between. He does have to range to his right for this one and just finds himself that ball eating him up instead of being able to play through it. Well, again, a long ball here. You've got a game. It's 7-1. Bases loaded for Oscar Mercado. 
And he takes off the plate. One ball, no strikes. Mercado in his sixth game this spring. Trying to pick up his second spring RBI. A little roller hit toward third. Convenient hop and the flip to second by Beatty. And that will retire the Cardinals and send us to the eighth. Takes over on the mound for the Cardinals. He'll go to work in the New York eighth. Talked about big arms in the Cardinals bullpen. We've seen in this ball game Ryan Helsley, Jordan Hicks. You know what they bring to the table. You might not be as familiar with the Cardinals rule five selection from the Yankees. Wilking Rodriguez got a great chance of making this club. This is his third outing of the spring, and he faces Kevin Parada of New York to start the inning. 97 mile an hour fastball to get him started. You'll still you'll see Wilking around that 100 mile an hour mark. The big key is, will he throw strikes? So far, so good. He had Parada swinging late. No balls. And two strikes. Good cutter right there. 94 mile an hour. Just a little bit of movement. Oh, got him up and in. And on a two strike pitch, Parada gets plunked. That's something the Mets saw a lot last year. And Rodriguez with a bad miss with two strikes. Puts Parado board to start the inning. It's certainly not what you're trying to do right here. 98 miles an hour. You have him 0-2, trying to blow a fastball by him and just miss his arm side. So Jalen Davis gets his first at bat. Davis took over for Tommy Pham earlier in the day. Former Cardinal Tommy Pham went one for three with a run scored. There was a better pitch to get into the count on one a nice curve ball from Wilking Rodriguez for as much talk as we've had about the fastball good breaking ball as well to go with it. If he's got another one of those breaking balls that he can throw down and away I got a feeling that it's going to be hard for Davis to pull the trigger. Ball got away from the Cardinals bullpen so time is called as Jalen Davis digs in he's no kid he's 28 drafted by the Minnesota Twins eight years ago out of Appalachian State. He's seen some big league time with the Giants and last year with the Boston Red Sox. Misses up and in with a four seam fastball comes back with the cutter down and away so good feel early on for some of the breaking stuff for Wilking Rodriguez. Just a bit low. It's two and two. Rodriguez first pitched on the 26th against the Marlins gave up a couple of hits in an inning pitched on March 2nd against the Astros and gave up a run now he gives up a double play ball perhaps and the Cardinals are able to turn it nicely done a couple of bobbles but it worked out 6 4 3 retires Davis. A well, nice job on the front end of this double play by Kramer Robertson to just keep it in front of him. He doesn't freak out, makes the good toss, and Luke and Baker with a nice stretch over there at first base to complete the double play. So here's Francisco Alvarez, big time Mets prospect. 
He will be the catcher of the future, if I'm not mistaken, in New York. Pretty big job, too, for the young Alvarez. Yep. We've talked about how veteran this staff is. Member of Brad's fan club is celebrating her birthday right below us. Well, let's get everybody tickets as close to the booth as possible. That guy sings like Harry used to. On the ground is short. Kramer's got it, and that will retire the side. Thankfully, we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. It's 7 1 gas yes, on Valley Sports Midwest are brought to you by Mid America Chevy. Brand another new pitcher out there for the Mets. This is Bryce Montes de Oca. And man, you talk about a guy with a lot of funkiness in his delivery. Check this guy out. There are a lot of moving parts here with Montes de Oca for sure. And that's the thing as a hitter, you just got to be able to pick out where's the window, where's the ball coming from. Don't look at all the stuff beforehand. You end up getting distracted. Uh, but an opportunity late here in ball games. That's the fun thing about these games, even though the Cardinals do find themselves with a six run deficit here in the eighth. Yeah, guys that are grinding out at bats. These are our guys that are trying to make an impression here late in ball games. Big arm kid that had Tommy John surgery in high school in Kansas. And a Missouri Tiger played college ball at Mizzou. So you couple the funky delivery with we've seen two fastballs from him 98 and 97 you got something going here very nice arm and it's not just one elbow surgery but two for this youngster and he was drafted by the Mets in 2018 got to the major leagues in September and here he is facing the Cardinals everything looks normal normal normal. Oh. Just ends up pulling that front side a little bit. Whatever's comfortable. That's the thing. Not everybody has to be a robot and look the same way. He's got a different front side, tiny hitch and delivery. Pitching is about deception. You know, if you can do a little something that gets the hitter off of things, and certainly 97, 98 will do that, but I think it's a benefit. Luke and Baker to straightaway center. And no problem there for out number one. That looks like uh, Montes de Oca two pitches ago had to hurry his delivery. Like so many, he too adjusting to the pitch clock. We've seen a lot of that. We've seen a, a lot of, of pitchers have to uh, end up stopping their delivery because of a, a pitch time discrepancy when it comes to the hitters too. All things that you're going to figure out, but it really has not seemed to be an issue at all during this ball game today. Taylor Motter, the hitter. Wonder how guys will be instructed to handle that once games count in the major leagues, right? Would you rather a guy rush his delivery and run the risk of injury or making a mistake or just settle for the ball? Just take the ball and step off. I think that the game matters. So right. depending on what the game is looking like, where the lead is, what the situation is. So I, I much rather just take the ball most of the time than I would rush a delivery and make a mistake that could end up costing you more. Right. With, with nobody on, the common sense thing would be yes. to step up. But in the heat of competition and you're not used to doing it, I'm, I'm sure that's going to be problematic well, to start. I can only imagine what it's like as you're bearing down and then all of a sudden out of the corner of your eye because there are three different clocks that the pitcher can see, on, on one on each side near the batter's boxes and one straight behind. You see the time going down. You want to just make a pitch quickly. That's exactly what Montes de Oca does. Makes a good pitch, 98, and gets the punch out. But this will be something, I mean, early, we've done, we did games last weekend, already to now, not even as much of a talking point. It's just kind of been where we've been at. And there's a good look at the pitch clock that the pitcher can see. You get one on each side and one dead ahead, a little bit higher. Moises Gomez, the hitter, and takes outside, ball one. I, I still haven't seen any news clippings of what the fans think of all these changes especially the pitch clock and the pace of the game it we've commented on it it is a much brisker paced game there is a lot more action there's not all the fat if you will that mm -hmm. slow the game down for 
fans and broadcasters alike. Well, I think it's a great question because you, you made these changes for a reason. Right. Well, ostensibly for the fans yes. who said this is what they wanted. And at least in spring training, we've noticed that the pattern is it's 225 to 245. Pretty much every minor, every spring training game in Florida and Arizona has been within that time window. I don't think it's really affected the quality of play. Do you? No, I don't either. I, I think that there, oftentimes in baseball games, there is a lot of wasted time. I think that there are a sure. lot of guys that, you know, end up fouling a ball off and walk around for 20 seconds that you just don't need to. I don't think that it has changed much for guys. And as we've talked to players, I don't think that they feel like it's a different game. Well, that stands to reason their whole professional life. It's been about being able to adapt, right? That's the name of this game. But <laughs> when you have the quick pace of this game. I wonder how fans like seeing a guy strike out a hitter on three pitches in 20 seconds, which happened the other day. It did. Strike three. That ends the Cardinals' eighth inning. We head to the ninth. It's got it going a little bit early. Montgomery made a mistake down the middle. They ended up pouring on a lot of ground balls uh, that ended up finding holes. That not a ground ball. Pete Alonzo, 40 home runs a year ago. He gets things going here in spring training. It has been all Mets offensively as Ryan Lutis is on the mound now for the Cardinals. Try to wash you. That's right. That's right. Man, what a thrill. You get to pitch in a big league game for your hometown team. And you face the New York Mets in the early days of spring training. Ryan pitched at three levels last year, if memory served in the Cardinals organization. Started out in high A, ended in triple A. That's a great year. To third. Nice pick. Motter, a strong throw. And in time to get Lorenzo Sedroya. That's a couple of times in our telecast that Motter's made an Arenado-esque play. And we saw last week him range far into foul territory, snag one backhand, this time to the backhand side again, makes the place, good strong throw, another good stretch by Luke and Baker over at first. That'll break up Alex Ramirez in the New York ninth. That got C.B. Buckner on the ricochet. And an even count. Ball got away from the Mets bullpen, so momentary pause here for Ramirez. Talked about deception the last half inning with Montez de Oca for the Mets. Some deception here from Ludis as well as he hides the ball well behind him and then it seems to come out of nowhere, really getting on top of the hitters. Yeah, it's not all about velocity, is it, at this level? Don't have to throw 99 to get hitters out. Oh, it's nice if you've got it. Sure. And maybe, you know, the, oftentimes there's the combination as well. Ludis has some good stuff as well, but the deception is very good breaking ball in the dirt misses there good job behind the plate by Herrera even with nobody on take a look at this delivery as he arches the back and ball just pops out looks a little bit like Andre Palante that hides the ball really well Palante having a fantastic spring so far showing off some big stuff So Ramirez walks, that brings up Beatty. Beatty doubled in the seventh inning off Zach Thompson. Montgomery, Helsley, Romero, Hicks, Thompson, Rodriguez, and now Lutis have pitched for the Redbirds today. Mets have touched us for seven runs on nine hits. And a strike. 
Same story for Beatty as Jordan Walker with the Cardinals. He may have to hit his way onto their 26 man roster. It's exciting though as a fan when you know that about one of the young prospects in the game of baseball that they have an opportunity to force the hand of the team to do it then you watch him go out there and and do that and that's what Jordan Walker has done to this point Beatty as well swinging it very well in camp another shot the other way by Beatty this one splits the gap between short and third so he's off the bench with a couple of hits and he's one of those guys that ball comes off his bat, it finds another gear. Yeah, to your point, that was 110 miles an hour off the bat the other way and just letting the ball get deep. That's what he did in his last at bat and he, as he ended up getting the double. Not afraid to go that way. You see a lot of young hitters that just want to pull, you know, pull the ball for power. Beatty showing that he can spread the ball around. So here's Vientos and takes a strike. Oh, and two. Little chopper toward third. Motter's got it. The flip to first is in time. Runners move up 90 feet. But the Mets down to their last out here in the top of the ninth. So two ground ball outs for Lutus. Let's see if he can get Mauricio and turn things over to the bats in the bottom of the ninth. Pretty like Mets, Braves, Phillies in the East. Uh, you know what? To me, I'm still leaning with the team that I've seen do it over and over again. I, I continue to like the Braves and what they put out there, but it is going to be a battle. What about you? Well, I can't root for the Braves. No. Uh, <laughs> I knew uh, throwing that back at you, I was no, putting you in a tough position. I think uh, you know, the run that the Phillies were on last year and knowing they're going to get Bryce Harper back is going to be a big lift for them. I think and they get Trey Turner. Trey Turner is going to be a big difference maker for them. Looking Baker. Nice recovery by Lutus at the first base bag. Not an easy play. But that sends us. To He's got to enter the game with purple rain, don't you think? I like it. I like the way that you think. Do you think that would get him going like Timmy Trumpet? Oh, purple rain. I mean, it can't hurt. Can't right? hurt. No, you're right. Good call. So, Lavender. This is Pedro Pages. I believe it's how Pedro's last name is pronounced. Pedro was out in the Arizona Fall League last year representing the Cardinals. As many know, the Arizona Fall League is where they send some of their best prospects and guys they want to give a big opportunity on a, a, big, a big stage. And Pages has done a very good job for them. Lifted to the right side. That is curling toward the Cardinals bullpen and into a crowd of 66.97 today at Roger Dean Stadium. Perfect Sunday afternoon. Fans are showing up. And last glimpse, as you mentioned, for a lot of these guys that are heading off to the World Baseball Classic. So fortunately, got to see Goldie and Arenado in action today. And I think that's what will make the next couple of weeks fun. We talked before the game about how we're getting close to the the dog days of spring training if you will when the managers and coaches the players alike are looking ahead to the start of a new season. As that ball is ripped toward Beatty who bobbles. 
But he gets his man by a step at first. Nice play for out number one. What will make these next handful of games so exciting is guys you ordinarily wouldn't see are going to get a lot of playing time. Added reps for all the intrigue that's out there in the outfield for the Cardinals. You have uh, Lars Newbar that is gone representing uh, Japan in the World Baseball Classic. Tyler O'Neill is going to be representing Canada. So certainly a lot of at-bats to be had out there for guys like Alec Burleson and others. Jordan Walker certainly among those. But you're right. You know what you've got in some of these guys. You know what you got in Nolan. You know what you've got in Goldie. So we're going to see what some of these extra at-bats look like for some other guys. And uh, one guy that I want to see more at-bats for, not just out of the DH spot, is Paul DeYoung. Paul DeYoung has had a rough couple of years, as we know. He's on his final year of uh, his deal with the Cardinals. He's been slowed this year because uh, in spring, just with some arm issues. But Ollie wants to get him out there playing multiple positions and certainly will have that opportunity with a couple of guys missing time. Alex been the Iron Man for the Cardinals today. He's gone the distance and is down to his last strike in the ninth. Hey, look, we all hem and haw and worry about how the roster is going to look on opening day. You know as well as any, Brad, two days in, the roster is going to change. Something's going to happen. With that attitude, certainly. <laughs> right? To short. And an easy pick and peg to first is in time for the second out. But the point of that is, if you make a positive impression here, your name might be at the top of the list when that inevitable change takes no, place. No, you're right. You're right. It's we, we do focus so much now on a 26-man roster, you forget it takes 40-plus guys to win a championship. You need a little bit of everybody. And the impressions that you make, even late in a ball game like this with two outs in a, a game where you're down by six, well, these at-bats mean something. And, and the impression that you can make on this coaching staff that's sitting here watching everything and evaluating everything they're important Yvonne Herrera the final hope for the Redbirds with Kramer Robertson waiting on deck it's 7-1 New York and in for a strike and we're under four weeks till opening day can you believe that it's going to be here quick can't wait. Battle of the Birds, the Cardinals and the Toronto Blue Jays on opening day at Bush. Two teams loaded with terrific young talent. Certainly is. And a Blue Jays team that made some deals. Tay Oscar Hernandez, they, they shipped him off, made a deal, brought in Dalton Varsho. They really needed some more left-handed thump and just a left-handed presence in their lineup. They get him. So we'll look forward to opening day and the next pitch to Herrera from Lavender is cut on and missed and that is ball game. The Mets ride some home run power and beat the Cardinals 7-1 your final score. The debut of Kodai Singa was successfully gave up a run Brad. Jordan Montgomery's line didn't look great but ground ball after ground ball has to be encouraged. Yeah I'd say very encouraging what you saw from uh, from Montgomery.